Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's video where we're going to take a look at the Six Sigma expert list. The belts, black belts, I suppose we could start with master black belt. Master black belt, black belts, green belts, yellow belts, some people have got white belts. Yeah, so let's, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a history lesson. I'm gonna to talk to you about how they were originally constructed from various companies, and therefore what you might do in your company. And I'm not suggesting that you follow some fancy dance standard, by the way, but I'll just give you a little bit of history about where all this stuff came from. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do, so we're gonna talk about I'm going to call them the Six Sigma experts because that's a better way. It's a better way to think of them as experts rather than am I a black belt, am I a green belt? Um, so the, the, original, the original concept, what did Motorola want? So let's have a think about this to start off with. So let's just go back. Let's go back to who coined the phrase. So Motorola, what did they want? They wanted to be 1800 times better in their quality performance in the field. Why 1800 times? Because that's how they measured up to the competition. They were 1800 times worse. So they were trying to take electronic products, televisions, radios, this type of thing, and they were trying to improve the quality of those items in the field by 1800 times. A highly technical problem. So they did, decided to get serious. They decided to get serious and take a little bit of advice from the likes of Deming, you know, who talks about having experts trained in statistical techniques. So they said, right, we need experts. We need experts to do this. And somebody said, our experts should have no barriers. That was the quote, they should have no barriers. What they meant was, they should have all the tools to fix any technical problem. And somebody said, ooh, that sounds like a black belt at karate. Okay, so they went, oh, fantastic idea. Why don't we call them black belts? They have no barriers. They have all the tools to fix any technical problem. Bang, there's, there's where it all starts. And of course, once you start going, well, there's black belts, somebody's gonna go, are there green belts? Are there brown belts? And everything else just flows from this first uh, this first kind of naming of the expert. But what we're saying is your experts have no barriers and that's what a black belt should have. That's what we're trying to teach them. We're trying to teach them all the technical tools. So whatever engineering problem, and by the way, these are technical problems. They are engineering problems. Whatever engineering problem they face, they have the tools to fix it. So remember where Six Sigma came from. It's technical problem solving. It is world class technical problem solving. And when you interview a black belt and you want to know what does he bring to your company, he should be not just the holder of a certificate. That's not the point. This isn't what this was about. This is practical, real. This guy is a world class technical problem solver. When I was trained as a black belt 21 years ago, I was told I would be worth double my salary, my current salary. And the reason why they were telling me that 
is because I would be a world-class technical problem solver and go anywhere and fix anybody's technical problem. Okay, if you want to challenge me on that, I'll come to your company and do it for you. But anyway, that's what black belts are. And in order to be serious, Motorola said, they've got to be full time on the job. All they do is solve technical problems. We need to get serious, this isn't easy to do, you know? If we're gonna do this, we need to get some experts, we need to get them trained in the best tools, and then we need to make them full time on the job. Then what they decided to do, well, okay, we want these experts to go fix the best thing. So there was other kind of rules placed around it. So the other thing was, it was full time. Each project should save $200,000 per annum. And we should get them to do four of those per year. So when I was trained as a black belt, this was the this was the the job description I was given. Okay, now I worked for Sony, so at the time, so let's go working for Sony, and you know, we made sixteen thousand televisions or computer monitors a day. All right, if we mess this up, we could lose this in, in a few months. You know, I mean, these projects. Were, were easy to find in that environment. So I was full time. I had to save $200,000 and I had to do four projects a year. And that was my job description. That's the original belt. The original guy, Six Sigma expert, wandering about, just saving like a million dollars a year. That's your job description. Now obviously other things flowed from that. So let's go down now. So Sony did have green belts. So the extra belt had already arrived. Uh, this would have been, uh, this was 1997 that I was trained. So what was a green belt in Sony? Well, a green belt in Sony actually was the same expert, except he wasn't wandering about doing full-time projects. He was part-time, but he went through the same four-week training program, exactly the same. Now they change it today. People cut the, cut the training program down. Yeah, so, okay. Then what would they do? They'd work with black belts. They'd work with black belts. They would effectively be the team that works on these. So when the black belt says, I want you to go and do an MSA, when the black belt says, I want you to go and do a DOE, this guy would know exactly what he's doing, he could go, go and do it. Yeah, but he wouldn't be full time on the project, whereas the black belt is managing the projects full time. And that was the original, that was kind of the original thing at Sony. Now, after a while, the people that I was trained with, we came back from our training in the USA, we wanted technical staff, operators. We wanted them to understand why we were taking the approach we were taking. Because the approach wasn't common, it's not common sense. The idea of this, I mean, this is just not common sense. I don't know why, but it's not. Yeah, so the idea of going inputs, control outputs, you know, you got your, you got your money-making process here. What have we got to do? We've got to put controls in our here, standard operating procedures, and if you do that, this side of the process will work. That's not the way people think. It's not the way people work. I can't see trying to find root cause all the while. Craziness. So we wanted people to understand this, uh, this approach so that they could work with us. When we sat them down in a group, they'd be on the, they'd be on the right track straight away and they wouldn't question us, why are we doing this? So we decided to put a two-day course together. And what did we call it? Well, we called it, of course, Yellow Belt. I think some people might call this White Belt. 
but we've got down to a lower level now. These would be operators, technicians, and again, anybody that would be contributing to the project, typically. And we trained them, and I still do this, in a little two-day workshop. So they get two days worth of training. What do the two days contain, effectively? The seven quality tools. By the way, you can do some serious damage to your technical problems with the seven quality tools if you just know what you're doing. Yeah, so it's two days, they get the seven quality tools, and I'm gonna add in plus process thinking. So there's no point teaching them the tools if they don't know how to think. So we're gonna teach them this, and then the seven quality tools, and we're gonna call it, we're gonna call it Yellow Belt, all right? So that's my kind of experience of seeing the uh, Black Belt, the Green Belt, the Yellow Belt. Um, now, just to kind of finish my story of experience of these things, what do I typically do today? So I, I would typically be called a Master Black Belt because what does a master black belt do? Well, the master black belt, he teaches and mentors these guys. So today I would be known as a master black belt. I don't say that at dinner parties, by the way, but anyway. Um, so I would be classed as a master black belt. Um, now today, what do I typically do? Well, today what I tend to do is what I call green belt training. Partly I call it green belt training because the people that I teach are part-time. This is because today, the likes of Sony in the UK, for instance, and this might be the same in other parts of the world, in other Western countries, there are no factories like this in, in the UK anymore, apart from maybe the car industry. The car industry manufactures high volume, um, still manufactures high volume goods. This high volume manufacturer of televisions and computer monitors, I've no idea where it is in the world. It's probably in China, could be in Eastern Europe as well. Um, but there are no big factories. The, the ability to do this is very limited today in the UK. Nobody can save $200,000 $200, a project because you just don't work in companies that have that kind of waste. They just don't have that kind of volume. Therefore, if we don't have big companies, I'm typically dealing with people that have got, say, 200 staff, 150 staff, maybe 400 staff at most. That They don't have room for this. They don't have room for full-time people. So they're gonna go part-time. That's the first thing. And the other thing is, they don't need the full-blown sort of statistics on steroids that you get if you go on a black belt course. They need a set of tools that fixes their problems. So what I do today, I teach green belt. I only teach it in a nine day course. So three times, uh, three days. So they get three weeks with me, three sessions with me, three days at a time because that's very practical for small companies. And what do I teach them in nine days? I teach them the tools that they will use most of the time. In other words, if you ask me, which tools did you use to solve a problem, Paul? Which tools did you use to solve a problem? They're gonna be in this. Probably 99% of the time, the tools that I use to fix problems the tools that I use to beat a technical problem to death come from my green belt agenda. And that's why I teach it. So what I'm giving to them is, I'm giving them all the power of a Six Sigma expert to solve most of their problems, 99% of them. I'm doing it in just nine days, and because they're part-time, I'm calling them green belts. And I predominantly teach green belts today, and they are part-time technical problem solvers. Obviously, who do they tend to be? They tend to be engineers, people from quality departments, sometimes technicians from the, from the factory floor. Um, 
that they're typically the technical staff of the of the organization but if I teach them for three days they can just about stand losing that person for three days then they get them back for a month then they have another three days so the structure is very similar to the way black belt training would go but the important thing is cut out all the nonsense cut away all the statistical nonsense that's not needed things like tests for normality and stuff like that a technician on a machine doesn't want to know a test for normality what he wants to know is he's got a technical problem how does he make this machine work better and then how does he lock that in so that he doesn't have to keep coming back to it and could, to be quite honest tests for normality aren't going to do that i haven't got that in my my lectures because it's just not useful it's a rare rare tool that you'd ever use that and i have to say in 21 years i've never used it so why do i want to teach it so there's your black belt there's your green belt there's your yellow belt sometimes people do white belts and they only have one day's worth of training i'm not sure what you can teach them in one day personally i've tried to make this smaller but i always come back to the fact that they need this and they need this and the only way to get these two across properly is in a two-day session and that's as low as i go um, but the idea this 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 concept now you know this really you know for most people you can't do this for most companies this you can't do this e either companies are too small you know 300 people can you afford to have full-time problem solvers wandering about the place probably not but can you give your technical staff the skills to just beat any problem to death you bet and i do it via these two and that's that's the way the belts get created when i'm providing them into my clients now my advice to you is this i mean someone has tried recently there's been an iso standard created for this certainly for black belts possibly for green belts i haven't read it but i know there's been a six sigma iso standard created there's a standard agenda and a standard definition of these things i'm not sure why you would want that your company is your company do you have technical problems are you a technical company is what you're making highly highly complex you know if the answer is yes you might need a lot of this stuff go get it and go use it if what you're doing is much simpler yeah easier to fix maybe you just need some uh, just slightly between these two and i've done this for companies i've trained what you might call the in between yellow belts and green belts perfectly valid for what they were doing i gave them the tools that they needed to fix their problems why soak up lots of technical statistical mathematics that you don't need you're not going to use so yeah you can have an iso standard but my view is look at your company decide what mistakes you make decide whether you need technical skill to fix it and then go and get the technical training that your experts need to solve it and if you want to call your problem solving experts black belts or you want to call them something else you want to call them ninjas i really don't mind but that's where it all came from do you have to stick to all this black belt green belt mumbo jumbo no go get the skills you need to make the biggest amount of cash in your company and then call them whatever you want